Sikhs sue U.S. Marines for religious freedom violations of uniform policy. On April 11th, four Sikhs sued the U.S. Marine Corps for refusing to allow their religious articles of faith. The U.S. Marine Corps Captain uh, Sukhbir Singh Tour and three recruits, Milap Singh uh, Chahal, Akash Singh, and uh, Jash Jashkirat Singh, filed for religious accommodations in 2021. Their status remains in limbo due to the quote-unquote uniformity rules of the Marine Corps. Sikhs can keep their beards and unshorn hair well under a turban while on duty. However, during combat deployments or recruit training, all articles of faith, which include the kesh, which is unshorn hair, the kanga, a wooden comb, kara, a metal bracelet, and uh, kachera, the kind of undershorts, and the kirpam, which is the ceremonial knife, known as the five Ks, are banned. The Sikh coalition accused the Marine Corps of stereotyping what Americans should look like. If the military, being the nation's largest employer, allows them to serve with their articles of faith, it would, quote, make it harder for employers everywhere to discriminate against our community. The Interfaith Alliance, Jewish Coalition for Religious Liberty, Muslim Public Affairs Council, and American uh, Islamic Congress, Women's Veterans and Families, and the Sikh American Veterans Alliance have all filed amicus briefs demonstrating their support for the Sikh recruits. So basically, the U.S. Marine Corps does allow Sikh uh, people in, in the Marines to have their articles of faith, except in two situations. When they are in their boot camps as recruits mm -hmm. and when they are on deployment, combat deployments. And what is considered, a, they can have it on duty, but not on combat deployment. And then what is considered a combat deployment can sometimes be a little bit like gray zone or diffuse, according to the articles that I've read. But why, why have would no they be suing? That's, that seems reasonable. I mean, that seems reasonable. Wait, wait, am I wrong about what the U.S. Marines seems to be like? What do you expect? You need headgear. So, yeah, headgear. a lot of it comes from having headgear. And a, the other objection to the beard comes from an inability to have gas masks that will properly seal to the face. Um, yeah, but I'm on, the, I'm on the U.S. Marine side on this. Like, what there's like, there's no... They just want, this seems like a case of requesting for religious privilege on something that is mandatory for everybody else. But we are like, we have magic on our side. So therefore we should be exempt. That seems ridiculous. Obviously so, the rules are very specifically because of safety issues. Like you need to be able to put the gas mask on. You should be able to put the helmet on. Like this is required from everybody. Why should you be the exception? It's... So the thing is that, as D is pointing out, that other arms of the military, including the Army and the armed forces, do allow these religious accommodations in these situations. So other okay, the, the, areas the of the military allow it. And so they're saying, well, why aren't you guys allowing it in specific? And then they also, their argument also is that like Marines are allowed to, the wording of it was weird, but basically beards are allowed as medical exemptions already so it's like okay if you already allow a medical exemption for beards i have no idea what a medical exemption for a beard would be by the way but it's apparently a thing um if you allow it in that context you can allow it in this context if you allow women to have their hair in certain ways that are beyond what used to be the uniformity code why not this so these are some of the arguments in their favor so first of all, the Army and Air Force, when you say they allow it, that means they have one rule for everybody, but the Sikhs, what, a different kind of rule for the Sikhs? So the Army it's and Air Force, when they... Okay. Listen to my question. Hold on. Listen yeah. to my question, okay? So when mm -hmm. the Army and Air Force allow it, are you saying they allow it for everybody or just allow it for... They have religious exemptions? Mm -hmm. They allow everyone to have religious accommodations should they request it. The Sikhs have yeah. specific requests, okay, I got that and they allow I got that those requests. Okay, so the solution is not for the Marines to allow it as well. 
the solution is for the army and air force for them to not have religious exemptions either obviously if this is a rule for everybody then it makes sense from a safety perspective and if it makes sense from a safety perspective for you to enforce it upon everybody then you should force it upon the Sikhs as well if it doesn't make sense from a safety perspective then for, don't force it on anybody but if it's a safety issue then there shouldn't be religious exemptions it makes sense to have medical exemptions because medically all you're being unsafe also if this is a medical issue and you're not then you're being unsafe by 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 putting on the helmet or, or shaving the beard i don't know how but if there's a medical exemption then the, your safety is being violated a different way so medical exemptions make sense but you can't say i have a magic sky daddy that doesn't want me to put a helmet on and therefore i require an exemption like this is religious privilege it's one thing to fight for religious freedom it's another thing to fight for religious privilege this is you know so like oh army and air force do it as well well they shouldn't what the hell i mean this is, seems they argue that they found a way to navigate it effectively and that Sikhs in these other arms of the military have exceeded to meet the high standards of these branches okay. and departments then nobody and, then they're then, navigating it so that if they can navigate it and they've approved it and they can still meet the high expectations of these institutions and they should be able to do it in this arm of the military okay and, yeah it, armed forces okay well. if you're saying if you're saying that we can navigate it and we have um exceeded expectations and we don't need the helmet then that's a case for not having a rule for every anybody do you know what i mean so if you're saying that the helmet is not required so the conclusion shouldn't be the Sikhs shouldn't be required to wear it. The conclusion should be nobody should be required to wear it. You either make an argument for nobody wearing it or for everybody wearing it. There is no good argument for only Sikhs not being not having to wear it. If you're like, it's not necessary, then why is it necessary for other people? You shouldn't be. They somehow found people. a solution to not wear helmets in a combat situation. That's actually insane. <laughs> I don't know. The, the point is not whether it's required or it's not required. The point is that if it's required, it's required for everybody. If it's not required, it shouldn't be required for anybody. There shouldn't be any privileges. That's the entire point. Yeah, other people argue that there are other countries that have had like I believe the UK has has utilized Sikh soldiers since World War One and World War Two, and like in their full articles of faith, they're like people have been navigating this for like a hundred years minimum, you know, in a okay. in a modern combat scenario. Like then we have let the other scenarios. soldiers. I'm not knowledgeable other... enough about yes deployment to be my... able to give more detailed responses. You my know? point still stands. My point still stands. Okay, I'm not. If you want to make allow the Sikhs not to wear a helmet then other soldiers should be allowed as well. Whatever mm -hmm. arguments you want to make, whatever non-faith-based arguments you want to make for Sikhs not having to wear the uh, helmets, it applies, that argument should apply for everybody else. Um, yeah, I think yeah. I'm so a little entitled. bit torn on the situation because I do think it is religious privilege. And the problem is, is that when it comes to the Sikh situation, like I was thinking about this today, off the top of my head, I cannot think of another religion that requires as much accommodation to uniformity codes as Sikhism. Like, can you think of any other religion that requires this much accommodation? No. I, I couldn't, I, like, of major religions. I couldn't think I of want, I, I demand a religion that requires you to have a dildo up your butt at all times, okay? And I want you to say that I need to have this up my butt while I'm serving my country. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and oh it needs God. to be, yeah. Make your religion like that. See if we can make it happen. Just. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, oh well, we have somebody. God from panama hi from panama that really took me i never expected that to come out of your mouth holy crap <laughs> <laughs> people are agreeing with me look at this people are saying i'm with armin on this 
No, but uh, seriously, I no, this is a genuine question. Can you think of another religion there that requires this much accommodation? The hijab comes close, but not as much as this. Close, but that's only one piece of clothing. That's not yeah. five different things. Yes, yes. The next, yeah, so Sikhs are not the main ones. I mean, like, hijabi women don't require for them to bring a weapon on airplanes. <laughs> like, oh. right? <laughs> right? Like, so, yeah, this is... Yeah, or in schools. That's a big problem when when in in schools, in the school setting, when yeah. there are children with the kirpan. They're like, yo, you can't have a knife at school, bro. Um, yeah, and someone in the live chat pointed out something in particular where actually, like, when Sikhs start to have the five Ks, that's actually like a different level of Sikhism. Like there are, I forget what it's called, but it's almost like a form of a baptism or a second birth where you undertake this additional level of carrying these articles of the faith. Like it's a more serious conservative or um, deepened religious practice where it's not actually required for most Sikhs. It's just like for those that go and undertake this additional deeper level of commitment. So I think that's important to point out. Right. Because so I actually didn't know that until recently, I, I, until I was actually learning about Sikhism. I thought that this was full stop always required. It's not. No. no. So, uh, yeah. So forever Storm is saying, yes, military cannot carry the cross into battle. Why should Sikhs be any different? Yeah, exactly. Um, wait, why is the U.S. Marine banning a literal <laughs> knife which could be used as a weapon? <laughs> Captain well, Madari, you have a point. No I'm kidding. Yeah, um, yeah. The, I'm assuming the, the knife that I, I'm assuming the like modern day knives that you carry in battle are a lot more efficient. You know, like the entire most like when you look at people carry are not serious weapons at all. Most. Yeah, they're not serious weapons. But also, like when you look at an American like soldier, whether they're in the Air Force or Marines. The entire outfit and where everything is and the accessibility of it has been, and the weight of it has been Engineer measured to the and nth planned degree. to this, like, look at the soldier on your screen. Like, mm -hmm. do, you, do you understand the amount of brain power and meetings and scientific research? Millions and, and millions of dollars. And, and scenario, like, you know, um, examine different scenarios like under observation so many different um, studies and observation has gone into every single detail of what you're seeing right everything has been weighed trying to come up with the most efficient way to carry these things with the least amount of weight accessibility to things practice all the practices that these soldiers go is with the understanding of where everything is ar around their armor so if you want to carry a knife the knife will have certain weights. It will be a certain place. I'm pretty sure an ancient, <laughs> you know, um, artifact would not fit into this modern <laughs> um, mm -hmm. gear at all. So there's that. Um, I think with this situation, I'm a little bit torn. We're like in per in principle, I agree with you, Armin. That okay, then none of the branches should have this, or that we should remove these requirements in general, because that's consistent. But mm -hmm. And the other part of me is torn because if these other branches of the military have already established this, then I think that the, the, these recruits actually do have a good argument because they're not gonna they're not gonna backtrack on these things. The other branches of the military, yeah, yeah, are not they just. I, I, I'm not. So legally, I'm not talking I think about, they have a good case. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I'm not talking about things that will happen because pro they could legally they probably would win this case. I'm just. I'm just here for the right to point out the hypocrisy of it. Like hmm. me just pointing out the hypocrisy and the religious privilege is not, um, it does not mean that what I'm saying has any legal standing. Obviously, mm -hmm. if, it's a pre if, if there's a precedent, they're going to be able to effectively use that as a way to win their case probably. But we're just here. It, it just helps us pro provide another example about religious privilege and the hypocrisy that exists. I think... The 
I'm also torn because the whole idea of uniformity is extremely important in the military and the armed forces. And some standards have changed in the modern days. Like they allow tattoos in ways that they didn't before and full sleeves and stuff like that. But if anyone knows anything about Marines training, particularly the Marines boot camp, it is entirely designed to break you as a man and be built back up in the image of a Marine. Now you can have your criticisms of that process, okay? But that's the fact of the matter. This is this is part of what it is. And that is to, in some ways, like when you hear people who have served, they're like, there is a process in some ways of taking away some part of your individuality to become what is needed to serve your country. Like, you have to have a shift in your mentality. It's required. Th this is how you make a warrior, you know? And, mm. you know, we can have conversations about what that means in terms of thought reform and all these things. That's a sticky conversation. But this is how it goes. This is what happens. This This is part of the process. To go through a grueling experience. These things are called hell week for a reason, you know? And it's also to it's it's also purposefully to try to dissolve the differences in between the recruits as much as possible to help make them a unit that went through these experiences together. And so when different people are getting exemptions that actually maximize the amount of difference they're seeing in between each other, like this is kind of some of the ideas behind this whole emphasis on uniformity, like just to give people context i'm not i've never served i'm no expert but this is my understanding of some of these things because other people might be like well, what's the big deal about it anyways um yes look at the uh, something i don't remember is saying rn us six mostly hardcore Khalistanis. Um, i would never make that assertion i would make the decision about canadian Sikhs. no i'm kidding right but not us i thought that was canada i thought I thought U.S. was Hindu, Canada was Sikh, and I don't know. Here, actually, Forever Stormy agrees with me. That's Canadian Sikhs. Armin's neighbors. <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> okay, it is my impression that it is more of a problem in Canada, but, like, that could be a stereotype, to be fair. Yeah. I did see a bunch it? of Palestinian protesters in front of the um, uh, Indian embassy when I was in San Francisco. That was fascinating. Because the, the Indian embassy, like, I would walk by it all the time. And I'm like, oh, wait, India is right there. Like, that's India, that's Indian territory right there. <laughs> and then there was, like, a huge Khalistani protest. And I went running towards them. I was like, I got to see this. <laughs> Get my camera out. I got to take a picture of this. But then I got freaked out and I didn't say hi. <laughs> <laughs> but I went across the street and I was filming and I could see this lady inside the embassy wearing a sari, just like staring at these people screaming, like looking down like, oh my God. <laughs> I read this coming. Trails is saying military uniforms is literally a provision of the Geneva Convention, whereby a soldier has to be clearly distinguishable from a civilian. Well, let's be clear. The Sikhs that are serving in different branches of the military, they still wear the uniform. They just have little details to it like when they wear their turban their turban is in the fatigue of the rest of their uniform or it matches the color of the rest of their uniform so it's still a uniform just with their additional stuff um damn Susanna could become a recruit i don't know about that i'm weak <laughs> no but your speech was very passionate you should like you should go do a recruiting video for the u.s army or the marines or something I don't know. People. I think I just have a lot of respect for the, well, mostly men that go through that process because. Yeah, not the women who goes. I said mostly men because it is mostly right. men. Let's be clear. Right. And they go through a different level of rigor also. Mm. So, yeah, if you just Too listen to the stories about like what they went through and the strength of character it took and how it transformed their character. Like listening to those stories has genuinely taught me a lot of lessons that has helped me in my life. Like stories of perseverance and breaking yourself 
to rebuild yourself back up again. It does like, get abusive sometimes, though. Like I do think one hundred percent. Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> yes. yes, and it, it it also gets very racist. Also. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're not completely endorsing everything that happens there. Okay. No. People die there through the pro through the recruiting process. Just through the oh, test. Oh yeah, that especially for buds training for the seals. Yeah, that's not good. We don't endorse no. that. They okay. drown frequently. Yeah. Like, are you tough enough to stay alive while we drown you? Like, damn. <laughs> like this, we're building characters by killing. Like, I don't know. I don't. I feel like there is some elements of that. What other people refer to as toxic masculinity. Sometimes I think, like, yeah, be so tough. We're gonna literally scar you for life and see if you could survive it. I'm like, okay, sure. I don't know. I think like. I don't. I do agree that sometimes um, becoming uncomfortable builds char builds character, right? And stepping out of your comfort zone builds character. But be careful how far outside of your comfort zone you go. Going far enough out of your comfort zone for it to have a life <laughs> lifelong damages to your physical and mental health is not the level of discomfort that you need for building character <laughs> okay okay but it you is the level of discomfort you need to be able to survive war and being in like a black ops site where no one knows where you are where you're operating in the secret no one that you're fighting for back home knows what you're doing and no one cares and you're still doing it mm. and you're doing it by the skin of your teeth you know that's what's mm. required it's not about you being comfortable. It's about can you survive the most deadly of circumstances with the highest precision possible? Hmm. They don't care don't about join the army. Okay, then join, <laughs> don't join the army. Don't join the army, guys. Don't join the army. Uh, if that's a requirement. Um, Aksumar is saying, I generally think women shouldn't be part of army if they don't prove uh, they aren't as good as those men. Yeah, of course. It should be merit-based. Uh, I do agree with you, Axibar. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.